right oh yeah, yeah me i jay giving us the background report to commence our conversation we thank you for watching and we thank you for staying with us uh let me begin my introduction dr abdurrahman abu hamisu uh has joined us live here in the studio and is a political economist and a public affairs analyst we're glad to have you thank uh dr abu hamisu thank, thank you. you for having me good morning nigerians good morning. Um, and uh, joining us uh, from Bochi, we have Professor Yao Haruna Shaibu, the department from the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Abu Bakr Tafawa Balewa University, Bochi. Many thanks, Prof, for joining us. Good morning, Nigerians. All right, um, let's let's begin our conversation with Dr. Abdurrahman Abu Hamisu, uh, with us here in in, in the studio. Uh, it's it's good we are talking about uh, the North East, you know, development and the the state of the North East at the, at the moment. Um, when the, the various programs started, it was basically, of course, uh, to address, you know, the impact of Boko Haram, you know, terrorism, uh, both on the people and on the geogra geographical space. Uh, of the of the northeast, um, what what are the current issues that have been addressed in the northeast at the moment? Okay, thank you very much uh, for this wonderful question. You see, uh, the northeast has a history, and the history has been that of uh, what I would choose to call negligence uh, of challenges that have been cropping up without any seeming uh, solutions in those challenges continue to pile up and pile up and pile up until it manifested in the form of Boko Haram insurgency in what are what are those very challenges the first challenge the notice faced is the geography of the northeast uh, rainfall there is irregular unlike the middle belt unlike southern Nigeria so the only source of life for the people of the Northeast is the Lake Chad. So the Lake Chad uh, is the source of life because the people are predominantly farmers. So they need water. Whether you are harder, whether you are cultivating crops, whether you are a fish farmer or whatever, you need water. And there was a drought in 1970s. The drought led to a lot of consequences that were not really addressed. So the first consequence of the drought was that uh, the lake itself sh uh, shrunk and because the lake shrunk the flood plains that the farmers uses uh, the farmers uh, use mm -hmm. to farm uh, equally shrunk with the shrinking of the lake charge that means that uh, they have to compete for the little available uh, 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 farmland so uh, the farmers encroach on the uh, grazing route which is the source of pasture for the others and that again led to another crisis what is known today as a farmers others conflict so it started all the way from lecture because historically there is a transnational route from Mali down to uh, that part of the country down to Middle Belt down to uh, 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 South West south south and southeast especially uh, the body of water that is carrying people from especially if, say jimeta in yola through uh, taraba you are already in benue from benue is either you are connecting to southeast or wherever you want to go to and then another route again is um, through kasina from kasina to kaduna kaduna to niger and from niger uh, you are in mokwa following the bank of the river, either you are in Lagos, wherever you want to go to. So this encroachment, this trigger movement to the, to, to the southern part of the country, and that effect is still what we are grappling with today. Then another effect of that very particular um, uh, drought was desert desertification, because the, the, the source of water reduced and rainfall was irregular, that accelerated Sahara and then the desertification began so you could see that one challenge is giving uh, is, is giving us a, a lot of challenges mm -hmm. just from one challenge 
And because the farmland shrunk, the, the pastures were not there, and then coupled with the discovery of oil, so we abandoned the environment, thinking it has no consequences because we're getting money from oil. So the focus became the civil service, not the land. And if you check it historically, and that is why there is a connection between Lagos and, and Borno State. Uh, this is outside the discussion, but if you look at it critically, why was it that in 1992 or thereabouts, when Abiola contested election, his running mate was from Borno State? And why is it that President Tinubu went back to Borno? Because there is historical connection. During the time that uh, agriculture was the mainstay of the economy, there's a direct connection because most of the millionaires in Borno then were merchants that were trading in agricultural products, not in petroleum. And then the migration started. Now, the civil service could no longer absorb the timid population of young persons with certificate the way the land would have done. So we abandoned the land. We're not caring for the land. We're not caring for the environment thinking that with the petrol dollar economy, we are safe. And before you knew it, there was unemployment and there were agitations because the petrol dollar economy could not sustain the demands for jobs, for employment. So you need to know somebody in government or somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody in government. So this led to agitation. And before you knew it, Boko Haram came up as a group of people that are preaching against corruption in the society. And before you could say, Jack, it, it turned violence. So you could see that from the negligence of the past that neglected the environment, not caring for the environment, or not uh, making sure that people, uh, remediation actions are taken to, 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 to remedy those situations, led to where we are. And then when that happened, I think the first thing was uh, President Bullock Jr. Okay, it was uh, even. Um, our own General Tiwa Danjuma that started the whole thing. How do we care for the victims of Boko Haram insurgency? But the, 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 the challenges that you have raised, quite yes. uh, you know, plethora of them. Yes. Uh, most of them not peculiar, you know, to the northeast alone. I mean, across the country, yes. you know, the, the drought, yes. desertification, yeah. you know, shrinking farmlands yes. and, and, and all that. Yes. In all of this, with specific to the North East, the federal government has spent huge sum of money mm -hmm. right from when the issue of Boko Haram came up, yes. the terrorism. Yeah, the North East was mostly affected. And yes. The federal government gave specific attention, invested a lot of money in the building, you know, that region. Yes. In addition to, to grants and loans from international agencies and non-governmental organizations who are also supporting. Yes. So what have, have, have we seen visible impact okay. of these efforts okay. yeah that, that is the point i was uh, making yes that when i talked about general tiwa Danjuma, saying okay sh we should care for the victims and then uh president momodu Buhari came and um there was presential there was presidential initiative on the notice under president good, good luck Jonathan. Jonathan. that was majorly coordinating humanitarian intervention um because the environment was not conducive for any long-term develop, uh, developmental activities. So when President Mahmoud Bari came, uh, he changed the presidential initiative to presidential committee on the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And that began the process of trying to even understand what were the challenges, how can we solve those challenges. And that led to the development of the document that was known as the Buari Plan. So, uh, and then President Mahmoud Bari, understanding that he needed to give uh, a permanent solution to the challenges, not ad hoc. Uh, so mm. he went to the National Assembly to say that there should be a commission that will take sustainable action against the challenges that are uh, bedeviling the North East. So uh, there was a bill to the National Assembly which was passed that became an act establishing the North East Development Commission as, uh, as, as a dominant body that's supposed to be responsible for the coordination as well as implementation of federal government uh, policies in the notice to really address those problems. And one of the fundamental things that the president and through the National Assembly asked the new commission to do was to understudy the notice, to understand 
Which of the presidents? Now? President Muhammadu Buhari. Okay. Yeah. The former president. Yeah, the former president. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So well, the, the first thing he said was uh, through the National Assembly, um, go out there, undertake a baseline survey of all that has happened in the notice to understand where we are coming from and where we are where we are and what we need to do in order to address the situation and then to develop a stabilization plan. So when uh, the uh, current leadership of the commission was uh, inaugurated, I think the first thing they did was to ensure that that very particular order as contained in the act establishing it was carried out. So uh, the first thing they did was to carry out the baseline survey and then on the basis of the baseline survey, uh, the, uh, they went further to develop the stabilization uh, and uh, the stabilization plan for the Northeast uh, to understand and to bring together all the elements that needed to be in place from developmental issues of the of the past decades that were neglected to human mm. capital development to issues around the environment because largely from the uh, on a baseline survey it was understood that the problem of the notice was basically the environment the environment the environment okay. yeah dr hamiso i think yes. i'll you know pause you at that point uh, yeah. you, you have made uh, some very valid points and uh you know would uh, let professor shaibo build up on some of the points you've made and of course we'll get back to you you know so that you can uh, elaborate more on um, you know the efforts that can be made uh, to rebuild the northeast uh, Professor uh, uh, Shaibu, um, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, come to you now uh, on this uh, issue of uh, the North East, and maybe I'd like to begin by asking you uh, if you think that uh, you know we should rebuild the North East. Uh, you know, give us your perspectives. What really are the issues? And then, uh, if we rebuild, um, you know, are we going to see an improvement? Uh, are we going to see in the, in, improvement in the lives of the people, in, in improvement in security? You know, generally, uh, uh, really, just give us your perspectives about the North East and if there is need for the rebuilding efforts. Good morning, all. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Ibrahim uh, Abdurrahman gave a valid background information about uh, noses. So, in essence, Nazi Development Commission is trying, is doing a lot in terms of uh, building schools, uh, giving assistance to hospitals and clinics, even giving assistance to institutions, apart from road construction or some other things. So, but actually in those uh, people residing in those they need to be reconnected and probably give them some things that can assist them. In doing that, actually, uh, the commission is doing a lot. In particular, it has been organizing so many trainings to the youth because uh, many of them lost their parents in the process of uh, the insurgency. They don't have anywhere to go. So nurses is now trying to bring them back, assist them with uh, where to stay, give them training on what to do because we cannot rely and uh, government work now. And uh, most of them, they cannot go back and farm. They don't have much to do. And another thing, many of them, they are not looking for a business whereby they can now remain on themselves and uh, probably assist the younger ones. So in that aspect, actually, uh, like the training we are having, NOSIS is now trying to give them training on some businesses like uh, waste recycling, uh, on trainers, uh, trainees, on how to probably know like the areas in the solar, uh, solar installation, so that by doing that, the Nazi people will be on their own and uh, life will come back normal like what it has been. All right, thank you very much uh, <clears throat> for, for your opening uh, comments. We're back to, here again to um, uh, Dr. Abu Hamisu. And, you know, just before my colleague, you know, uh, went to Bauchi, you, you were speaking on, you know, 
what the commission, the Northeast Development Commission, uh, had been able to to achieve. And I know that at the onset, the uh, the, the content of the Northeast Development Program uh, was targeted at you know uh, impact of terrorism, but at the moment it's been escalated to to I mean it's now holistic. It's 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 a whole uh, lot of you know uh, items to develop and resolve some, some issues which, which you have raised. Now, the, the, the question I would ask is because um, the Commission is supposed to also uh, um, supervise, uh, assess, and also coordinate the activities of some of the agencies within the region that are also working. Yes, so speak to us about the baseline survey which had been conducted and what were the findings okay so <laughs> unfortunately um when you look at the issue in the northeast uh, if you are given the task to sort the issues mm -hmm. the major problem you will confront is which of the problems am i going to take from the perspective of programming and prioritization uh, if you say okay i need help because the people need to be healthy for them to be able to go about their normal businesses. Mm -hmm. Security is calling you. Education is calling for your attention. Because as I said, even the budgetary allocation to the Northeast was the lowest when you compare it region to region. In terms of all the indices of development before the insurgency, the Northeast is the lowest from educational attainment to even presence of uh, 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 centers of excellence. Like for instance, if you go to Lagos, you can talk about Lagos Business School and other things like that. But if you go to the Northeast, you won't find anything like that. So it was a serious situation. For, for, for instance, the, the baseline. There was a presentation that was made to the presidential committee some time ago by Adam State Government. And what was the issue? They needed to increase the stock of the medical doctors they have because the ratio is becoming unmanageable. That is the ratio of a doctor to patients, the number of patients. And by their analysis, for them to meet up the recommended standard of a patient, uh, a, a doctor to a patient, it will take them 45 years. That is to tell you the gap in human resource development. Now, the findings were that, one, the notice needed to rebuild its infrastructure. It needed to rebuild its people. It needed to give priority attention to education, to up its infrastructure so that it can compete favorably with other regions of Nigeria. And that is why I said it was that past ne negligence as well as the underfunding of the Northeast that combined with the threat environment posed to the people to ensure that we had this very particular problem. So in solving it, and then before I come to solving it, the other thing again is that the insurgency compounded the problem. So we're not having the issues of orphans, widows, and widowers. We're talking about the challenges of the environment. The, but Boko Haram has introduced another dimension. One is insecurity. This insecurity from physical security to material security to even the security of a child. You have a situation whereby a mother and a father uh, were killed, and then a child is left orphaned. And that was why the uh, former vice president decided to build a school for orphans in Borno State. Those orphans have no mother, they have no father. In fact, because they were relatively small when they were killed, they, they couldn't even tell anybody who their rela relative or uh, relation Ah. So they are under the care of Borno State government through the instrumentality of the former vice president. So that very particular school is their home. Is their home. They don't know anywhere. They don't know anybody apart from those that are giving them care. So you could see another dimension. Then we talk about issue of trauma. We are talking about issues around uh, sexual uh, assault and abuse. You know. Then uh, it's, it was a society where men were dominating. Even if you go to a market, you, you hardly see women doing the, the selling. Mm -hmm. It is men that are doing the selling. Uh, the head of the household is always the, the, the man. But now you have women as the head of the household, which is another challenge again. Because if you are not talking about women inclusion or so, uh, then it's because the men were heading the household. But that has changed now, which means that 
in terms of approach, this very particular um, issue must be recognized. So from social to economic to political to, 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 to um, institutional rebuilding, so you have a whole complex lot of issues that are demanding for attention. So, so which which should be addressed, you know, uh, you know, first, which which is more important in your in your view? Yes. Since the issues are, you know, quite. You much. see, what, what we're looking at, and uh, as as somebody that has been in, in the in touch with what is happening there, and um, we are also involved in one way or the other, is build the people. And this is the problem we usually encounter in Nigeria. The problem is that of a big man that will always go out there to get money and come back and distribute to those that are close to him. When you take the big man away, then those people are in trouble. But when you build the people, the people will in turn build their environment because they will take actions that will improve their own lives. And by improving their own lives, they're improving the social well-being of not only themselves, but equally others around them. So for instance, um, at a point in Borno, to charge a phone was a problem because Boko Haram had vandalized the entire uh, power infrastructure, as well as even some areas, no network, because they've already taken down the, the mast. So some people, came up with an idea of okay let me build just by generator and but the person was doing it to earn a living because the economy was uh, on its knee uh, so but people were bringing their phones to charge to, to pay a token but those people that were bringing their phones to charge needed to call people so they need their phones to be charged so by trying to earn a living you're equally servicing the needs of the people and this is what i call uh, entrepreneurship so entrepreneurship is not people that will buy and sell because whatever you want to buy is readily available but people that are solving problems, problems in the society so if you look at it critically uh the approach and that is why when these trainings are being uh, uh, conceived uh, the first thing was, okay, let us go to the master plan. What was no, the no, Before you go to the master plan, yes. uh, because what, what we're looking at, yeah. uh, the purpose of this type of conversation yes. is to um, know what progress we have made yes. and what gaps there are and yes. how to cover those gaps. Yes. And if we look at the mandate of the NEDC, it includes resettling, no. rehabilitation, yes. reintegration, yes. and reconstruction of infrastructure for victims of yes. Boko Haram, yes. as well as tackling, like you said, issues of drought, oh, yeah. uh, ecological challenges, yes. and poverty. Yes. So if we take that first leg of the mandate of NEDC, yes. we know that for that mandate, we had a lot of actors, yes. state and non-state actors, yes. you know, playing their roles, contributing, trying yes. to re uh, rehabilitate and, you know, resettle victims. Yes. How much of that, what have we been able to achieve? Okay. You know, and, and yes, and where are we with that first leg? Okay. Uh, I wish my, my friend, who is the Borneo State Coordinator, is, yes. is, 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 is on, oh. because I think he's, he's in the studio. Uh, he, should be, he should be able to give you the specifics, but I, I know for sure that um, uh, starting from the Presidential Committee on the Northeast that I, I work with, uh, Burma was reconstructed in collaboration with Borno State Government. Burma was reconstructed. And I was part of the Committee for the Repatriation of uh, uh, the, the refugees who are our brothers and sisters in Cameroon. Uh, so, uh, together with uh, uh, Eunice, uh, the former Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, mm -hmm. uh, Adia Sadia, then she was uh, the head of... Um, uh, Is it the Refugee Com Commission? The Refugees Commission, yes. So, together with her, we were in Cameroon to assess the living condition of the people under the Trapatite Agreement for the Repatriation of uh, our brothers and sisters in Cameroon. So uh, we were able to do all that was necessary under the 
United Nations, the condition for resettlement, all that needed to be in place, uh, the amount of money that's supposed to be given to those that are returning, and then there should be a passage, a safe passage for them. So when they land, there should be a home that we house them for a number of days for them to settle, and they were supposed to be given uh, some kits, for instance, um, uh, sheets of uh, zinc, nail, wood, so that they can rebuild their homes. And so how, how much of those have been resettled? Yes. Because, I, 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 and are the camps still yes. existing? Okay, from what I know, you see, the issue of the camps uh, is a very delicate issue because the politics behind the camp is something that you don't want to even uh, contemplate because of the interest it is generating. Unfortunately, I would say unfortunately, uh, it's like Yobe State and uh, Adamawa State understood the politics behind the camps. And because of the number of displaced persons in those areas decided not to go to the camps, but they decided to go to their relative's house and remain with them, that is their own issue. And then when they understood the politics behind the camps, they decided to close their own camps so that there is no any official camps. IDP camps. IDP camps. Now. In Adamawa. In Adamawa and Yobi. And Yobi. And Yobi. Now, in Borno State, because it's the epicenter of the insurgency, mm -hmm. and because of the interest of some actors, they prefer that these very particular displaced persons should remain perpetually in the camp. Because without them remaining in the camp, they cannot justify why there should be more funding. So they will tell you that before they return, uh, the condition would be that the environment must be safe. And then if you have Boko Haram still springing Springer. sporadic attacks, then there is a problem. Because there is never a time that it will be safe. Anytime any bomb explodes, it becomes a justification to continue to keep the people in the camp, even if the people are willing to go. But you have people that are determined to go back to their communities, irrespective of whatever was going to happen. So, for instance, when Bama was rebuilt, a week after Bama was, re uh, was rebuilt, I, 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 was, I was in Bama, and then the people of Bama decided to go back to Bama against the wishes of some of the international NGOs to say, look, we, we, it's better for us to perish in our homes with dignity than to remain in the camps, and then we've been treated as if we are kids, we have no freedom. And that was the, the, the mentality. So, for instance, I, I'm aware that uh, people like, just the way you mentioned, mm. other public uh, spirited persons uh, equally uh, doing their things. Then go to build some houses in Borno State, mm -hmm. uh, Momo the Indimi built some, and NEDC has built more than, I can't give the exact figure, but they've built more than I think 200 or 300 housing, uh, houses in Borno State to resettle these persons. But what is happening with resettlement, as I said, another angle to read is before you could resettle again, the military must give you clearance mm -hmm. that so, you are so, able so to protect. So let's clear with the camping yes. and know what we have done with the camping. Yes. You have told us Adamawa and Yobe, no more ID. Uh, no, no, no more. Even in Borno State, I think yes. it's just very few that are remaining. Are those remaining in Borno, are they still being funded? And who funds them? Okay, um, the, the funding is done in three ways. Borno State Government is equally participating in taking care of those that are in the camps. The UN system, that is the umbrella body of all the humanitarian actors, are, are equally delivering their own uh, 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 mandate by caring for the IDP camps. Now, the Presidential Committee and then the North East Development Commission, which is a successor organization, mm -hmm. is equally doing the same thing. Now, if you look at the, honestly, a lot has been done. For instance, like Operation Safe Corridor. Mm -hmm. You know, Operation Safe Corridor started more or less like a pathway for people that were forcefully conscripted into the fight. They never wanted to be part of it. Mm -hmm but they were forcefully conscripted. Dr. So, Dr. Dr. Hamisu, you, you see, um, you know, my first question yes. when I asked uh, Professor um, Shaibu, Shaibu yes. I, yes. I was trying to ask about, um, you know, the efforts to rebuild the North East. You know, I just asked, you know, the general question of if he feels, you know, there's, there's need to Do concentrate rebuild. on the rebuilding efforts. And yes. you made a point while you spoke about, you know, rebuilding the people first. Yes. 
you know and that's you know the main reason why i asked the first question okay. about if there's actually need to yes. rebuild the north east yeah. because you could concentrate on rebuilding the communities and if the people are not interested yeah. in going back to their communities mm. or if they feel unsafe like you have said yeah. it would be an effort in futility yes so in your own perspectives now looking at the different communities and then you know the idps those who have returned those who are not willing to return and then the state of security at the moment yes because insecurity is still an issue so what what really um is the best way to get the people in the northeast that have been affected by insurgency to get to leave you know um or if you like go back to normal life should it be in those communities where there's still insecurity, where yeah. you still have remnants of the Boko Haram, yeah. um, you know, members still still dwelling. What really do you think is the way forward for that? Well, for me, the way forward is exactly what the Commission has been doing. Uh, the first thing was, as I said, to have a stabilization master plan as directed by former President Muhammadu Buhari. First, to understand the problems and how to tackle it. So the baseline showed what the problems really are. The stabilization plan shows the, the, the plan to solve those problems in the immediate, in the short, medium, and long term. And there are other studies. That is a, another thing that is quite interesting. There is another study that, uh, studies that are going on because the master plan could not exhaust the entire thing. So there are pointers. So you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to understand from the people, you, are, you need to go back and do a lot of work again. And those studies are ongoing. For instance, what is happening with the flood plains? What are the consequences of the insurgency on the environment? Uh, for instance, deforestation. That is causing a lot of problems. Those studies are ongoing. So for me, that is another achievement because once you have are people that are deploying studious approach to issues. It becomes systematic in solving those problems. So having those documents in place, I think, is another achievement that anybody can build on if you're serious about addressing the problem. Then the second issue is empowering the people. Because if the people are empowered and they're not dependent on government, they will be self-reliant. They can move from the Northeast to Lagos, they can earn money from Lagos, and they will come back home and do something meaningful with their lives. Mm. Then depending on government and becoming uh, more or less uh, 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 political talks to politicians that will use them at the end of election, they discard them. So give, giving the people the needed empowerment that's supposed to give them the skills to participate in the economy is very key. I will leave it at that. I will come yes. back to that very particular uh, <laughs> point. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Abu Hamisu. Let's bring in now um, uh, uh, Professor our, our Professor Shaibu in Bauchi. Uh, Professor Shaibu, it's, it's one thing to, to have ideas documented uh, on paper, uh, but when it's it's a different ball game when it comes, you know, to implementing uh, those uh, ideas, you know, in, in, in reality. And um, it, it's good to know that the NEDC, you know, had done a baseline study of, of, you know, the situation in the Northeast and have found, you know, what the problems are. And I've also come up with a stabilization plan. Now, with specific to the issues, the issue between the farmer Oh, the, the challenge, you know, arising from drought, climate change. It would be good to know what the stabilization plan to address that issue is, on the one hand, and the issue of farmer header, you know, challenges on the other. Uh, the Northern Development Commission actually... Uh, try a lot or is trying a lot the first thing they started was uh sensitization try and uh, they try to inform the community the impact of our uh, desertification as a result of our failing trees uh little amount of rainfall and some other things so in that actually they organized a training sensitized uh the public on how to safeguard our environment by planting trees, try to reduce uh, cutting of trees, 
for the purpose of uh, firewood and charcoal and some other things. So later now, after sensitization, they now uh, conducted another uh, training activity. That one is tilted towards empowerment. Since we have discovered that uh, drought is uh, trying to move into noses very fast, how can we safeguard that drought? By doing that, if at all we achieve what we want, we'll be having uh, a lot of uh, harvest after each rainy season. But when you look at it now, things are changing. Even the rain is erratic. To plant, after some time, you know, you may not get uh, rain that can sustain the plant. So at the end of the day, the yield is going to be very small. We have a lot of people in the North East region. If care is not taken, how to feed them will be a problem because we cannot produce what we can uh, eat at the end of the day. So by doing that now, Nazi Development Commission shifts a bit. They now introduce another training for the renewable. By introducing renewable, we are now trying to tell them that, uh, okay, you need not to use firewood. You can use electricity to cook, to do some other things, and still to light your environment. And apart from that, for the dry season farming, it's very easy. People have started using it now. You can get your solar panel, get a small uh, submersible foam with your tube oil. No need of using petrol and some other things. You can now uh, water your land and do whatever, and you can get a lot of things. Then, apart from that, actually, by that uh, using solar and some other things, because we have abundant solar in the solar sunshine in the northern region, that one is not a problem. We cannot even finish it. So with that, we can now tilt a bit from that. Another way, I think, now this should focus on it. With the solar radiation, you can do a lot. Not only powering your gadget, charging your handset, uh, powering your street light and some other things. You can even use it for cooking. You can use it for heating water. You can use it for so many things. Like... I agree with you, Professor Shaibu. I, ag I agree with you. And it's a, it's a laudable idea that you have brought. And I do hope that it is also part of the stabilization uh, plan. But how do we, considering the fact that, you know, this alternative source of energy that you are, you know, proposing to address the issue of drought and desertification and all that, it's not cheap. So how are you impacting this knowledge, you know, to the people? You know who are who have been uh, devastated, uh, people who have been impoverished, you know, by terrorism and by climatic factors. I think still, the whole will go back to Nazi Development Commission and some other states. Let them come down to a grassroots, try and empower a few ones. Maybe after that. Uh, scaling of that process can continue. By the time we identify maybe, let's say we started with 10, try and give them all the kits, all the necessary kits and the training. Because the training now, we gave them training actually through the Government Commission. So we told them what to do. We now challenge them even on the future things that they can do. So I think if government can now give them a token, the tools and some other things to start it will have a lot. Uh, Shaibu, we would uh, come back to you. But we have our guest joining us uh, from uh, Beiduguri now. We have uh, Professor Babagana Mohammed uh, from the Faculty of Engineering, University of uh, Beiduguri. Uh, Professor Mohammed, is he there? And uh, Faculty of Engineering from the University of Medigree. Is, is he there? Okay, uh, I'm sure that uh, Mohamed Umaru, uh, the NEDC Borno State Coordinator, uh, joining us. Okay, yes, uh, good to see you. Okay, we have both of them. Uh, very uh, good. 
Mohamed Umaru, NEDC Bono State Coordinator, and uh, Professor Bagana Mohamed right there uh, in uh, Amiduguri Studios. Uh, glad that you could join us. I'd like to begin with Mohamed Umaru. Although, yes, we have begun the conversation, but I'm sure that uh, from the studios there you have been following, uh, you know, uh, and uh, of course you have listened to the comments made by our guests so far. So I like you because you're the NEDC Coordinator. You know, just let us know um, how far the NEDC has gone. Uh, in view building the North East. Where are you at the moment and what's the plan uh, for the future? The NDC Borno State Coordinator, Mohamed Umaru. Mohamed Umaru, um, Yenre is, is, is addressing a question to Mohamed Umaru, who is the NEDC uh, uh, Borno State uh, Coordinator. And, and she's asking uh, for Mohamed to just give us a progress report of what NEDC had been able to do. Uh, Mr. Umaru, can you hear us? Very well report so far what has NEDC uh, been able to achieve with regards to rebuilding the Northeast uh, thank you and good morning uh, nice to have me in the studio this morning uh, the question is self-explanatory the only thing is you are not here in my degree uh, but I will give you the details uh, honestly, from the inception of Northeast Development Commission, it has done a hell lot of uh, uh, things that has to do with rebuilding of the Northeast. Uh, before the inception of Northeast, so many buildings, so many infrastructure were destroyed by the Boko Harams in all facets of the local governments. But uh, with the coming of Northeast uh, Development Commission, there are so many uh, plants on ground that has really affected the lives of all the people that were affected by the insurgency. Uh, I will start mentioning about when it comes to housing. Uh, just in one location under Mafa local government, we were able to build a 100 mass housing which were completed and all the populace of that location are already uh, using the edifice. Another one is if you come to education, we have also built, uh, rebuilt so many uh, secondary schools across the, the 27 local governments, namely uh, Biu is one in the southern part. You can also look at the Ngoza local government also in the southern part. If you look at the northern part, we have Monguno, we have Magumeri and Ganze. All these are beneficiaries of uh, uh, classrooms and other infrastructure that has also impacted positively in rebuilding uh, those areas that were affected by the insurgency. Uh, coming to um, health sector, the, the Northeast Development Commission has also key in uh, with what the Borno State Government has been doing uh, in the health, like I said, specifically in Borno State, we were able to intervene in the dental hospital where currently we have completed the male and female uh, dental ward. Uh, the other edifice for extension of the theater is ongoing. Then in the University of Medigree Teaching Hospitals uh, also, we, we also intervene in the extension of the labor ward. Uh, before now, when you go to Medigree, uh, University of Medigree Teaching Hospital, 10 women cannot deliver at the same time. But as I'm talking to you, there is an extension of what? That 10 women can deliver at different uh, rooms, you know, safely. And if you look at the place, it's just superb. And other places where Northeast has also played a vital role uh, is the issue of road construction. You see, at times, the, the Boko Harams, uh, you know, would always want to take advantage of where there is no movement in terms of uh, security operatives and what's a few. If you look at the road construction that is almost at the 90% completion along uh, Nguom, Kadamari, uh, Gongolong, there is a road network that we're also building there. As we speak to you now, 
there is always a movement when people can transport their farming implements. The governor has done a lot in trying to take the people back to their, 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 their places. And with this road network, I believe me, you, the, even the, the, the sundries of the attacks had been reduced to minimal level. In fact, for the whole, for the entire three months, you cannot speak about any, uh, the little attack that we've been hearing. So I think uh, on and on, if I start counting what uh, North East has done, believe me, we will exhaust the whole time uh, without uh, meeting up. But in also security, you know, most of the Boko Harams took advantage of this and they were destroying police stations. In Burma alone, we have constructed a complete police station with a residential area for the rank and files, DPO, and then this DCO. The same thing in Kondoga local government. So, so many facets not in has touch, and it's a continuous process. Uh, it's a continuous process. Of course, uh, we want to see uh, all of that. Uh, uh, Mohammed uh, Umaru. We also have uh, right there in Medjugorje, Dr. Zainab Mohammed. Uh, Chalou from the Department of Pure and Applied Chemistry, University of Maiduguri. But I, my question now is directed to Professor Babagana Mohamed, who happens to be in the same studio with Mohamed Umar, uh, that's the NDC coordinator. Uh, so, uh, Professor uh, Mohamed, uh, you listen to the NDC Borno State Coordinator. I know you're in the same studio, but I would like you to tell us in reality what is on ground. Would you say that the NEDC are, um, um, you know, focusing on what is priority uh, for the people in the northeast at the moment or you think that there are you know other issues that should be addressed uh, you know that any DC may not be uh, looking at at the moment what, what really is the picture on ground right there in Borno State well uh, good morning and thank you very much for inviting us to the studio to share our views regarding the rebuilding of the Northeast, especially in the context of the role the Northeast Development Commission is playing. The fact remains that when Northeast got established, in addition to what the state coordinator has said, they took the right step by first of all doing a holistic study and then gathering of information regarding the current situation on the ground which was the baseline study, which looked at not only infrastructure, but also it looked at so many other aspects of uh, human life and endeavor in the Northeast. Now, this study led to the development of a master plan for rebuilding of the Northeast. And that master plan has actually been pre presented across the six states in the northeast as well as it has also been presented in abuja for inputs and as well as for observations and the rest of them so it does also show that when you have a master plan it means you've charted the right course for you to be able to rebuild any entity which you think has actually been affected but whatsoever so following on the development of the master plan and then its acceptance as a tool for rebuilding the northeast the Northeast Development Commission has therefore gone ahead to embark on the projects she has mentioned because first you need to have statistics of how many, how many infrastructure are affected and then secondly also you need to have the field in terms of what the people in the Northeast actually uh, are going through. This much they've done and they are now working the talk so to say. Um, Professor Babagana Mohammed joining us again from our Medugiri uh, studio. Uh, when we come back from this break, we'll bring in Dr. Zainab Mohammed Shalube uh, to, to speak on, you know, if, if we look at the narratives going on with the NDDC at, at the moment. It's a narrative of, you know, so many things, uh, misappropriation, you know, corruption, and most importantly, misfocus you know, with the NDDC. So when we come back, Dr. Uh, Shalube, if you're listening, I'd like you to speak on, on the priori priority order, you know, that the NDDC is, is taking this ch these challenges, uh, you know, and addressing the issues uh, within the Northeast, not just uh, Bruno State. Uh, so when we come back, I would like you to take on that question. 
You're watching Good Morning Nigeria. Let's go for a short break. We'll be right back. The Council of Our Fathers. All right, welcome back. Uh, let me formally again introduce Dr. Zainab Mohamed Shalube, uh, Department of Pure and Applied Chemistry, University of Medugiri. She's also there. Dr. Shalube, thank you very much for joining us. We do apologize for the connect connection uh, interruptions. Uh, I, I had put a question to you. Apparently, you, did, you didn't hear it. I, I wanted your reaction. I wanted you to enlighten us. If, because if you hear the narratives coming out from the NDDC at the moment, it's a narrative of you know misappropriation corruption but most importantly misfocus and the NDDC those who uh, you know who criticize the Commission uh, allege of course a lot of uh, misfocus the NDDC is not really addressing you know the basic needs of the people from the region so I'm asking um, what are the you know uh, priority order of the NDDC at the moment and do you have timelines, indicators, and performance evaluation mechanism. Having me and good morning. Well, I want to start by saying that uh, not is Development Commission. I think it has displayed like um, utmost uh, integrity in handling all their projects. Unlike other commissions that we had a lot of uh, issues, a lot of complaint from the masses. Uh, I think this is quite different from the Northeast Development Commission. They are actually focused and then they have prioritized all their projects in a way that uh, I would also like to build on the um, points of the master planning, that is the sustainability master planning that has been developed. Um, NEDC was able to bring and then to pull out all the necessary stakeholders from the region, that is the Northeast, to bring them on round table and then to make the presentation to them to see that the needs of the people have been rightly captured. That is, all the research are being done and then it is truly representing the needs of the people. This um, civil society organization were involved, the marketers, the commerce, the, the, the building, all were involved and then the need uh, was captured in the way that it has actually addressed what the people are truly um, looking for after the um, insurgency, how people have been displaced, how people have uh, lost their livelihoods and so many other factors that have actually bedeviled not is particularly in Borno State uh, where I'm coming from. I think a lot of our priority has been given here because uh, it has hit Borno State so hard more than any other state in the northeast uh, region. And then I want to tell you that now when we are looking at all those um, programs that are happening here in the northeast, most of the programs are actually happening simultaneously. Like now, we are seeing that people are being empowered. People are trying to see how they could now uh, get their uh, lives back and then with uh, integrity and then dignity, not just making them to rely on then um, support and then some other aids from other donor agencies of the government. But our people here, we know that they are predominantly farmers. And then the Northeast uh, Development Commission is trying to see how they could give people what they really uh, are into. That is how they could enhance what they really have, how they could now build on it. So there are so many programs. If we look at the environmental protection program that the NEDC is actually heading, it is also in the forefront. I think uh, things that have to do with agri, things that have to do with economy, they are in the forefront and then they are of critical importance to the people. Uh, there are a lot of um, interventions that are happening, a lot of uh, things that are being put in place to see that these people get self-reliance apart from just the infrastructure, apart from the physical building that we are seeing, but people are also um, enhanced intellectually and then people are also empowered. So I don't think that uh, there is any misplacement of priority in what NEDC is doing. All things are, uh, are going um, very well and then they are supplementing the effort of the government. The government is actually collaborating, private uh, 
um, organizations are also doing that, the NGOs, I think the Northeast uh, Development Commission has done a very, very critical role by seeing that it is carrying all critical stakeholders together to see that all things are being done with transparency and then even the monitoring and evaluation. Whenever a project is uh, being um, completed, because all projects are actually done from the start to the completion level, there was no project that has been aban abandoned so far. And then whenever there is a commission, you see that they, they, they bring in the government, they bring in other peoples from the society, from the community, to, see, to, to, to showcase what they are doing. Uh, many thanks, uh, Dr. Uh, Chalube, uh, for uh, your comments there. Uh, it's uh, important to talk about that, like uh, my colleague had asked, that uh, if we have to talk about the NEDC tomorrow, there will be no need to put up the mic, uh, really. Uh, so um, let's uh, get to Professor uh, Babagana uh, Mohammed now. Uh, yes, we, we, uh, you, you, you know, uh, talked about the fact that well, the N NEDC is doing a good job and all of that, but Basically, the focus is on infrastructure, and uh, we hope that you know human capital development also will be upscaled because, like uh, Dr. Hamisu had said, that's important. You know, building the people, you know, would help. But let's talk about sustainability now. Uh, it's not just about building the schools, building the hospital, uh, and all of that. Um, um, you know, long term. Uh, you know, what's the guarantee that you know all those things will be will still be in place? Because there are other issues. Uh, that the people of the northeast uh, face, like uh, Dr. Hamiswood uh, has said, uh, there's the issue of drought, the insecurity is still a challenge. Uh, you know, the people do not have are not you know properly empowered. You know, to be able to take up other skills and if you like, move to other parts of the country, develop themselves, make something for themselves, and then come back to their communities. You know, to make it better. So, uh, looking at sustainability of of uh, of, of the impact that the NEDC is uh, trying to uh, put in place now, uh, what, what what would you like to say? Well, uh, again, thank you very much for your question, which is very important and uh, critical. The fact of the matter remains that the focus is not only on infrastructure development. For instance, uh, ending today for the past, past four or five days, the Northeast Development Commission has been holding training workshops in various sectors, especially in the sector of environment. That, that shows that the focus is not only on infrastructure development, but also on human capital development. And you can appreciate the fact that when you train a person, you increase their self-confidence. You also upscale their knowledge. And then you also make them aware of the situation they are in. So this is something which is fundamentally different from infrastructure development. That being said, the Sustainability issue has to do with for how long Northeast Development Commission has actually lasted. Like I said earlier on, a master plan has been developed after a holistic study, holistic baseline study of the situation on the ground in the Northeast. So if at the current age, Northeast Development Commission has been able to achieve the things it has achieved so far, and like my co-discussant said, so far, there has not been any abandoned project. That shows that their continuity, or rather their, their development efforts, as well as rebuilding efforts, are actually sustainable. Sustainable in the fact that the, uh, the, the, the so sustainable in the fact that the the duration of the project, if you see it so far, I mean the duration of the Northeast Development Commission, if you look at it so far, in the context of other development commissions which you prefer to shows shows that they are on the on the right path so i truly believe that the monitoring and evaluation unit of the northeast development commission as well as the consultants they are engaging to make sure that these projects get delivered these workshops get delivered and the results gotten from all of these are actually monitored and ensured that they meet the needs and purposes for which they are they are, they are, they are being done in the first place
So, Mohammed, thank you. And I like that you talked about the, the project. Uh, we also get to see uh, the um, uh, collaborative efforts of uh, some state executives, especially the governor of Bruno State. We see uh, housing units, you know, of course, uh, being uh, inaugurated. We see uh, some other infrastructural facilities uh, being also inaugurated to assist the people. Uh, these are commendable. Uh, you know, efforts to also um, contribute to the NEDC's, uh, um, you know, uh, plans to uh, reintegrate the people of the Northeast. But is this also replicated across the six states that comprise the Northeast? We talk, we're only talking about Bronu. There's also Yobe, Admawa, there's Bauchi, and there's Taraba. These are all states also impacted, you know, not just by terrorism, but also by drought, by drought, desertification. So uh, that's why I'm coming back to uh, Dr. Amisu, uh, Abu Amisu. What is the quality of even the projects that have been enunciated and have been implemented by the NEDC? Yeah. Because when we talk, we also make reference to events. You know, we, we, we have a mirror, a mirror in the NDDC. Yes. So that the NEDC... We should learn. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. And, and that, that is why I said, um, though I've been moving with the pace of the questions and so on and so forth, um, now, it's not as if one is unnecessarily praising the NEDC, but uh, we felt that NEDC should learn from NEDC, as you said. And one of the things they are doing is, as I said, documentation of the processes not just going to implement just because you want to please people. So for instance, after the development of the master plan, now they are at the phase, of, uh, they are the phase uh, that I would choose to call readiness for execution. Okay. What is the readiness for execution? What are those things that are supposed to be in place for us to start the implementation of the master plan? So while we are doing that, what can we do immediately to address to cushion. to cushion the impact and effects of the challenges we're talking about. So the, N the NEDC came up with the environmental... NEDC? NEDC, yes. <laughs> Not came NEDC. Up, no, 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 I said NEDC. Okay. Came up with its environmental protection program. And what are the programs? One is to create awareness among the people on the need to relate with the environment, exploit the environment, manage the environment in a sustainable manner that you will not bring disaster to people. We are in this because we did not address the challenges of the past. So what do we do going forward so that we can mitigate the impact the environment is having on us? So the issue of uh, climate change awareness uh, became sacrosanct. And across the state of the Northeast, a lot of stakeholders were selected and introduced to the challenges of the environment caused by human factor and to take remediation action and to equally uh, advocate at their own various level in the church, in the mosque, in the road, on the road, in the marketplace, uh, the challenges of the environment and why they should adopt the use of alternative energy for cooking okay. so that three falling will be reduced. Okay. All right. and there are just uh, complete your thoughts okay so uh the other aspect of the training again is the fabrication of efficient stove it's a local technology developed by one of the engineers in the northeast with little charcoal you could cook instead of a whole firewood so now you have been taught on how to fabricate the the stove itself without having to import and then they are taught how to equally make the fuel for the stove from leftover food so that you could produce the briquette. Just, that before, we, just before we go, because we have less than two minutes oh, okay. to go, yeah. what, is, um, the, uh, or what are the plans to also address the issue of uh, encroachment yes. such that the header will be able to you know, carry out his or her trade, yes. and the farmers will be able to, you know, go to the farms. Okay. 
Now, I think that is something that um, has been at the forefront of the entire thing. And, but if you look at it critically, since the inception of uh, uh, NEDC up to this moment, uh, the issue around farmer others clash has reduced in the northeast. You're not having that um, in the news as it used to be before. For instance, in Taraba, you have those issues about farmer uh, other conflicts in, in, in Bauchi. You do have those uh, issues. But with the sensitization and kind of along the communities and empowering the community leaders to equally sensitize people and take decisions that are beneficial to stemming those problems, uh, you could see that the challenge now is mostly from the north central to some part of the northwest uh -huh. and then the south. So right. it that has really reduced. Because so, of time, thank you, mm. uh, Dr. Hamiso. I just quickly like uh, uh, Umaru, the NEDC uh, coordinator, uh, you know, to round off uh, this conversation. Mohamed Umaru, uh, please, what are the projections for development in the northeast, uh, say, in the next uh, one to three years? Projection, thank you for that question again. The projection of North East Development Commission in the next three years is to make sure that all the projects line up for execution in terms of uh, health care, in terms of education, in terms of roads, etc., etc., will be achieved. My discussions have said a lot about the master plan. You know, when you have plan, I definitely you have a direction. Like the people are saying, if you fail to plan, you will plan to fail. So NEDC has really planned all its uh, executionary projects and the hope is that we are all going to complete it within the timeline. Because all the machineries are in place to make sure that these things are done. There are directorates that handles these things from start to finish. We have the consultants on the other side also advising in terms of the technical. Then the, 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 the staff of NEDC are different department are also doing their work. We have the people that execute, we have the people that monitor. So at the end of the day, we work as a team to ensure that uh, all the things are, are achieved. And my MD, CEO, and the management team are really the prime movers behind all these things that I have enumerated. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Mohamed Umar. We actually hope that, uh, you know, like you've said, uh, all, uh, all the things that you have projected will be achieved and the people of the North East will be happier for it. Uh, many thanks. Of course, Nigeria would also benefit once the North East is uh, back and settled. Uh, many thanks, uh, Mohamed Omaro, NEDC Bono State Coordinator. We also appreciate Professor Babagana Mohamed uh, for joining us for the conversation uh, right there in uh, Meduguri and Dr. Zainab Mohamed uh, Chalube, uh, who also joined us. Uh, both of them are from the University of Meduguri. Uh, we appreciate uh, Professor Yao Haruna. Uh, Shaibu from uh, Bochi State, uh, from Bochi State, who joined us in the studio uh, right there. Thank you so much. And uh, right here in the studio, we have uh, Dr. Abdurrahman Abu Hamisu. Many thanks uh, for you know sharing your thoughts with us uh, on this conversation again. So, uh, good morning. Nigeria continues, but let's have uh, a bit on sports now. Nigeria Super Eagles have climbed 14 places in the latest world rankings released by the Federation of International Football Association, FIFA. The West Africans are now ranked in 28th position in the world. The Super Eagles are also now the third best team in Africa. The Atlas Lions of Morocco had the highest ranked team in Africa, while the Tarragon Lions occupy second spot. Egypt and Cote d'Ivoire complete the top five teams.